Hey! The live audience! Hey! Oh, oh it's so noisy. Well, thanks for flying in. Yeah, no, I got, well, first of all, I got I gotta, I gotta get, you know, for Lord, I mean, I gotta get, I gotta get ready. That's so scary. Welcome to the UK! <laughs> You yeah. gotta put that on backwards now, Lloyd. Come on, come on. We're switching it up. Look at that. Hair. I know, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's right. yeah. I brought my flag. There we go. What? The true flag of America. <laughs> wow. right. There you go. You're all air guttered out. <laughs> Is that right? I, I'm not so sure. Anyway. Surfers? Okay, well, for everybody uh, watching the show, um, yeah. we need we, we want some we want some information off yeah, you. We want, you? We want, okay. Yeah, who are you? Uh, what's up? Guys, I'm Rossi Morielli. Uh, I host a show called American Air Gunner, uh, and it's a TV show in America. It's the only television show in America that's all about the world of air guns. So we focus on everything from competitions, hunting, uh, the, the newest guns coming out, new products. But you know, in, in America, there's a lot to cover. We have everything from 177 brake barrels up to 50 caliber air guns uh, that we go hunting big game with. And, uh, we've done a lot of that. I've shot a hog out of a helicopter with a 50 cal, and um, I've even seen 72 calibers and 82 calibers. And I mean, it just air guns are a different world in America. They certainly so. are. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I've been watching your show actually, and I've watched it. I've watched it previous, not just last night. Well, I appreciate that. No, not just last night to, to sort Liar. of do some cramming, but I actually have watched them without without being forced to, and I really enjoyed them. I loved the format. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I love the way you get the guests in and it's really informal, but uh, educational as yeah. well. Uh, just what a uh, Do you know what, um, if, if you guys haven't, uh, you know, a lot of our UK um, uh, viewers might not have seen American Air Gun. Probably not. It's different. If you, it, it's, it's good. I, I really enjoy it. And I'm not just blowing smoke. I really appreciate that because, you know, the big difference is, you know, the YouTube world, which I think is what most air gunners are used to seeing air guns on, you guys, like you guys, you guys are professionals. You know air guns. You're, you're very smart. You know them inside and out and, and upside down and backwards. And that's not what we're here to do. We're here to show America, who doesn't really know that much about air guns, how much fun air guns can be. Whoa. In America, it's you get your Red Rider, you get your 22, you know, Crossman pump, and then you get your 22 caliber rimfire, and then you get your 20 gauge shotgun, and uh, you know, off you go into the, into the fire yeah. arms world. Yeah. And that's, I mean, everyone watching the show in America right now is like, Yep, 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 that was me. And so now air guns are, are, are powerful and they're accurate and you can do so much more with them and Americans don't know. So our goal is to show how fun, how exciting, and, and, and really just like, woohoo, over here! So that then they go, oh wow, air guns can do hunting, target shooting, competitions, and then they can get on YouTube and start going, let me find out more, and then this is where you guys come in and, and give them actual information that they can use and figure out how to buy a gun, what gun they want, what works. Them to sleep. <laughs> yeah, and it's great for nap time after a nice cup of tea. Yeah. Which I actually had right here as soon as we started. How the beautiful Andrea stuff? came in, your wife came in and brought tea. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real thing, America. Yeah. Just so you know, it's a real thing. Yeah, our audience love our tea breaks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, guys. Anyway, look. What, we, what we'll probably do is, if it's okay, we'll probably put a couple of clips um, right in this video now, sort of showing what American yeah. Airgun is all about. Because I, I really do believe that, like a lot of our UK audience, even though there are stuff that that, that might not make a hundred percent sense to them, or no. you know, the the powers and what have you. But you know what? It's still a fascinating world, isn't it? And yeah. and you know, I, and when I was watching it, I really enjoyed it. So we'll put a couple of clips in now and give you an idea. Um, of, of what American Air Gunner is all about. An air gun show? Yeah, it's air guns that shoot everything from 177 caliber to 50 caliber to like 100 caliber. It's an air gun show that travels the country meeting some of the finest people in the world. Real people with real stories and a love for air guns and some firearms too. Searching for knowledge and new technology in the air gun world is what this show is all about. Yeah, it's a gun show, an air gun show. It's American Air Gunner. Sure. 
Anyway, so so tell me, um, I know that you've come over here uh, specifically to uh, to shoot the show with us. Yes, yes. Right uh, the, this is this is the number of one course. reason. Yeah. But um, have you have you sort of have you done anything else while you're over here? What have you what have you been up to? I have. I've, I've been able to squeeze in a couple other things around That's good. this show. Good, yeah. Isn't it? Um, yeah. You know, we we, yeah. we hit Iwa in Germany uh, because again for us it, it, that there's probably ten times the amount of air gun companies that are showing air guns in Iwa than they are in Shot Show. So mm -hmm. got to see all kinds of crazy air guns and 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 things that um, from you know eastern the eastern side of the country and the world and and uh, it's weird because everyone converges kind of into Europe. So you yep. get the Far East, obviously some of the companies from the West bringing out guns that we don't even get in America. But like the Gamo and Umarex and uh, Velocity Outdoor, seeing some new stuff they're releasing out yeah. here. Iwa this year was massive, crazy, um, bigger than Shot Show, I'd say. Wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah. well, for, for our mm. side, we'll chuck guns. Definitely for yeah. the air gun side, yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah. But there, yeah. it was, it's massive, especially square foot size. I mean, there's like yeah. 97 holes. Yeah. Uh, and then from then, we've actually been on a tour. Um, we've been stopped by some of our American air gunner partners. We went up to Sweden and hung out for a couple days uh, with FX and mm -hmm. kind of saw some of their new stuff and shot some of their things, got to know yeah, that Yeah, they've company. got some amazing new stuff coming out, haven't they? They I mean, do. We, and, we, and at EWA, they released like 20 new, I mean, I can't right. even keep up. I had to, I, I, I still got like six of them down. The other 14, I can't even remember. Yeah, uh, and then we came. We, then we came to the UK, and, and we spent some time with Air Arms. Uh, you know, and Claire, their Air Arms is really dedicated to the competition stuff. So I went and did Target Sprint, which I about had a heart attack running 400 meters and then trying to shoot guns. <laughs> yeah. uh, it is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. crazy. Yeah. But 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 afterwards, like, okay, like if I can exercise and shoot guns. I'm in. Yeah. You know, just fit it into uh, your entire life. So that was very cool. We went and did some uh, field target, hunter field target, uh, stuff like that. So I kind of got to see that uh, with 12 foot pound guns. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't, even my 177s are 20 foot pounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just, a 12 foot pound gun to me is, I thought I could throw a pellet 12 foot pound. I didn't, I didn't know. So I'm, I'm learning a lot about this. Uh, and then we, we came over here, uh, met Tony and with Day State and Brocock. Did a full factory tour, got to know the family there, all the people that were working, and realized that like there's one person that puts together like all the Wolverines, and, and there's one guy that quality controls and, and Technic, you know, he does yeah. all the stuff, and one guy at Brocock, Phil, like Phil, he puts together every Brocock, and you're like, I have a Brocock. Thank you for putting my, yeah, my, my, yeah. my, my gun together. Like yeah. it's it's fantastic. So uh, and then and then Tony's been, been kind of taking me on a kind of a tour of just the British air gun world. We've gone by gun shops, we've gone by ranges, indoor ranges, and just kind of seen a little bit of how you guys do things over here. Hmm. Uh, and then we got, to, we got to test some of like the exact same gun side by side, you know, 50 foot pounds, 12 foot pounds. And then I'm not gonna lie, I'm not ashamed to say it, and then Tony beat me in a shooting competition with a 12 foot pound gun when I was using a 55 foot pound gun, 25 caliber. So. Fair you right. know, it's yeah. There, there's a saying, isn't there? Something about skill and power. I can't remember. Yeah, what it yeah. Is, and old age yeah. and treachery as well. Yeah. <laughs> old age and treachery. Definitely. I'm not trying to compensate for anything. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a, a big ball on top. So. And what? what uh, I mean, what do you uh, what do you think about the UK air gun scene? Um, how does it? How, how, you know, are you surprised by it? Does it differ from? I mean, it obviously differs from the American air gun scene. But yeah. what, what? 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 What did you feel? What do you feel about it? All? It's just a lot more serious. It's taken ser very serious over here. Uh, okay. You know, you, we went by a, a, a target, a, a field target kind of shooting match just on a, on a random day. There were 50 people there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a that's a tournament, you know, for yeah. us. 50 people, 100 people would be would be crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, this is that's just a typical day in there, and there's a, a small part of the group. Um, go gun shops. Going into an air gun gun shop, walking in, and just seeing everything air gun is is. is well, I've never, I've, I've done that once they're, 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 that I know there's like three of them in America. I mean, I know there's some small ones, but a lot of them, their firearms, they kind of over in the corner, there's air guns, or the only air guns they have are brake barrels, because brake barrels are kind of self-explanatory, yeah. and that's what guys are buying for their kids. But to walk in and see just PCPs, you know, the high, the, the, the expensive ones, and the, mm. and the entry levels, and, and, and a little bit of everything from some companies I know, some companies I've never heard of, just an awesome experience. I, I when America becomes as in touch with air guns as uh, the, the UK industry is, air guns are going to be, I mean, the industry is going to be 50 times as big as it is now. Okay. Uh, which is which is the exciting part for us. We, we feel like we're on the entry level of the air gun world. Even though air guns are big and there's a lot going on, especially in the rest of the world, as far as America goes, I have this conversation, air guns? Like BB guns? Yes. You mean more than our BB guns? Yeah. And I'm like, uh, well, by BB gun, if you mean like a 50 caliber air gun that I shot a hog out of a helicopter with? Mm -hmm. Yes. And they're like, 
And so that's what we're doing. We're just so so in, 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 in the US, I mean, uh, obviously we have a lot of respect for Daisy um, in sure. the UK and, and, and Crossman. In fact, actually, I was looking at, I, I always keep a, a, an eye on the, the, the Daisy Facebook page, and, and I think it's absolutely fantastic how they encourage the youth over there, and it just seems to be a massive part of, of air gunning. Um, and obviously you've got Crossman. Who else have you got over there? Who, who else is really churning? I mean, Umarex, Umarex USA. Yep. Uh, they're a big company over there, and, and they and they license so all the Walther, all, all the all the pistols. They have a ton of the the uh, CO2 CO2 pistols. CO2 yeah. things are, are huge from 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 them. Um, Crossman, you know, Benjamin, and yeah, uh, that whole world, which is now Velocity Outdoors. It gets very right. confusing, but for everyone out there who knows Crossman, you know, Gamo. I actually have just recently found out that Gamo was a used to be a, was a Spanish company that was kind of bought and brought over. I, they've always kind of been a big American company in my mind because when yeah. you walk into Walmart, yeah. you see Crossman, Gamo, uh, and then like Ruger and, and stuff like that, which are which are the Umarex products, but they're all branded something else. Um, so I always thought they were just an American company because that's all I ever ever saw. Yeah, I'm feel but I'm, I'm feel but American. Now. Uh, well, that's uh, yeah. rapid air weapons, isn't it? That's I mean, right. Rapid yeah. air weapons. I mean, you're also forgetting um, Air Force, aren't you? Air Force, yeah, 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 the, yeah, big, yeah. the big caliber. Yeah. They're uh, raw is being bought. Well, Air Force is is uh, over here is is stealth. Yeah. That's the gun power. Is the gun power? Yeah, that's right. Brand. So it's yeah. re, it's rebranded. It's made in Fort Worth, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Then it's uh, uh, then it's rebranded. Well, they they ship the components over here and they put together as gun power stealth mm. in the UK and they Margate, I think. Mm. But it's that's an right. American-made product. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But of course, I think um, gun power bought. Rapid air weapons about a, six months or a year ago, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So they're now yeah. subsidiary. Well, so, yeah. so hopefully we'll get to but see the rapid raw... air weapon is the isn't it? It's yeah, a that's why. I, uh, yeah, again, yeah. it's me using the wrong names, yeah. which I'm going to get to in a little bit actually. But these yeah. are names <laughs> I am just hearing again for the for people like, oh, you know the old Theo, and I'm like. Mm -hmm. Who's, Who's Theo? Is yeah. that a guy? Yeah. I, again, no idea. Well, now I ben. know. Yeah. But you know, yeah. six months ago, people were throwing that name out there, like, well, you know, the good old fashioned Theo. But I'm like, I, I guys, I didn't grow up in air guns. Okay. Yeah. But I love them now, and I'm learning, and that's what we do. I'm learning along with our audience. I'm trying to take them on an adventure and educate them from the 177s all the way to the 50 cals and and everything in between. Competitions, hunting, field targets, everything that you can do. We want to just say it's out there. It's a fun world, and it's way less expensive than shooting your you know your firearms and you can do it in your backyard which yep. is the best part of it yep cool cool that's it cool. All right. Uh, so what are we doing on today's well, show? What do you guys do? We're about to have a cup of tea. Well, <laughs> already. <laughs> well, uh, well I, I've yeah. got I've got um, I've got a silencer, uh, a new modular silencer, and I've got a lovely new stock from uh, Lucas Parsley. What okay. you, I, I brought, have no idea what you brought. Well, I brought uh, a prototype. But we've had a chat about how the, it's 40 year for day state. So I got yeah. some free giveaway books, and we have oh, to decide. 40 these years. Are, 40 years. So they've got some free books. Um, you have to decide how we're going to give these out. We've got 10 of them to give to our avid readers. And well, I, I, yeah. I don't know. I was sort of thinking maybe maybe it should be the first ten guys that, that Say comment on nice. it. Well, I, well, yeah. yeah, but we've got ten. <laughs> we've, got, we we've got to get rid of them all. Okay. I want to talk about these. Can I talk about these for a second? You can, yeah. So, so okay. moderators. You don't really do silence. No. They, they start to think you've got uh, Dillinger, don't they? Every time you mention silence in America, they think you're going to raid a bank in 1933. Yes, yes. yes. It's the we thing don't have we that. see yeah. in movies. So these yeah. are not... If you have a silencer, especially for a firearm in America, it is considered a firearm. Mm. This by itself is because you have to have a license for it, and if you have it with you, you have to have that license and the and the registration and everything with you. Mm -hmm. So like, if someone's like, "Hey, where'd you get that?" You get paperwork. You have to have it with all yeah. at all times. So this is this is new in the air gun world, and we haven't really been focused on these American air guns because I'm not exactly sure with all the silencers coming out if they're still legal because it, it's it hasn't been proven not legal. Okay. Are not illegal if you have a silencer that's removable on your air gun. It's just kind of a gray area. Discuss. They change their mind, don't they? Because we've been selling silencers to America for, or moderators, or muzzle weights, or whatever yeah. you want to call them that day. Uh, we've been selling these to America for 20, 30 years, and it, it goes through fashions. Uh, basically, um, all American firearms are controlled by FL, FFL. So if it's a moderator, then it, you must have a license for it, as you, as you say. Right. But an air gun is not FFL covered. It's, it's completely outside that particular law. Right. So if it's an air gun silencer, then you're all right. But then there's a law that says anything you could put on a gun and it can silence one shot That's is considered it. a silencer. Yeah, like a Coke bottle. 
yeah. or a potato. Yeah. So they so what they uh, so the definition was that if it can be used, an air gun silencer can be used on a firearm, mm -hmm. then of course it's not liable, not li loud. It's, right. it's illegal. So what a lot of the UK manufacturers do is they make their silencers so they would explode if you put them on a firearm, or they will catch fire if you put them on a firearm. And they usually engrave them as well, air gun use only. And if you look at the boxes or the silencer, it usually has air gun use only. <coughs> and the, the, the wadding and the foam is usually flammable, mm -hmm. and there's usually a burst. If you look at a Huggett silencer, you'll notice there's vent slots. And that just blows out if you put it on a 22 caliber. Yeah. And it makes it a bit more, and then finally, sometimes we bond them on. Yeah. So that they can't be taken off. Right, and, uh, then, and that seems then to be okay. That's yep. it. Yeah. But over here, it's it's looked at completely differently. Yep. You guys look at it as a silencer is a way for me to go and shoot <clears throat> guns and be polite and considerate to my neighbor That's or, to it. My, or to my own ears. That's it. If you right? apply for a firearm certificate, the policeman is more likely to say, Would you like a silencer? because he doesn't want the complaints from the neighbors. Right. So, so it's frowned upon. You're almost rude if you don't have a silencer on your gun. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, you go if that. you go to some of the, uh, the indoor clubs uh, uh, and you get these guys with like really low PC. You know, it can be quite disturbing when you're shooting uh, to keep your and concentration. Bang, bang, yeah, just, yeah. But there's, there's, there's obviously two reasons. The other one is is because obviously a lot of the guys are hunting rabbits and stuff like that over here uh, at fairly close range. Uh, the silencers do actually reduce a lot of the noise and it allows them to probably get the second shot off uh, sure. uh, uh, easily. The reason I brought these on today actually uh, was because we started to, we've been sort of promoting small um, manufacture small companies, which I think is really important. Um, instead of everybody big producing stuff, we, we like the idea of the, the smaller guy producing yeah, stuff and, sure. and, and, and starting to produce quality products. And, and these are a case in point. Um, these are made by a company called Custom, uh, Custom Carbon. And uh, the guy's name is called Steve, and he started to produce these silencers um, or moderators uh, mm -hmm. a couple of months ago, and they've done really well, to be honest with you. We've had them tested. They're all 3D internals, uh, 3D printed internals. Yeah. Really? <coughs> and, um, and, and evidently special materials that, that stop certain things, vibrations and, um, oh God, what is it? Anyway, yeah. they, they, they do all sorts of fancy things, and, and, and the long and short of it is they work really well, and they're all proper carbon fiber. This is a, this is a so, compound one where you can make it shorter and Well, we th this yeah. is the reason that I thought I'd show you guys today is because I, I actually contacted Steve a couple of weeks ago and I said, look, you know, do, do, you, do you make a modular silencer or a silencer that we can make, you know, have a short one, a longer one, depending on how long, how, how loud your gun is. Yeah. So Steve, bless him, worked till two o'clock in the morning a couple of days ago to get this silencer to produce. And what he's produced is a modular silencer. Yeah. Right. Now, <clears throat> that, that's, for example, that's a standard silencer, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and say you want to put it on a, a, a really loud PCP you might find that that's not quite loud enough. So what like Steve's done, one. yeah, like yeah. an FAC yeah. one. So what Steve's done is he's, he's producing these little modules that, uh, that are, can extend the silencer. So the nice thing is, is that literally you will unscrew that, you will put that on there, you will put the uh, the end cap back on, and now all of a sudden you've got a bigger silencer. Yeah. Ah, if, for example, cool. you've got a small air pistol and you don't need the, the, the amount of noise reduction, you can use one or two of these on their own. Yeah. Uh, so these are these are going to be produced. Um, I've seen a humor do this recently. That's right. That, they've done, uh, that's incredibly quiet. Have you tried that? Uh, we have actually tested them on the Blackpool air rifles, and it was good. There's yeah. no doubt about it. Yeah. But the problem is with the humor is I think they're about uh, 90 pounds. Right. Um, now, if you've already got one of these silencers, which I think Steve sells for about 40. Right. Um, he's working on these about 20, 20 odd pounds, about right. 22. So in actual fact, it's it's a it's a lighter, yeah. cheaper UK made alternative, so which I'm all up for. Yeah. Um, well, we, I mean, to Are be honest, yeah. well, the thing is what I want to say to everybody is if you like the idea of this modular silencer, let, let us know in the comments, but also as well, if you if you want to gain access to, to these, go to your local retailer and ask them to contact Custom Carbon because Steve's a small small manufacturer, small supplier is doing an absolutely fantastic job. Our customers love these and I want more people to be able to get hold of them. So go to your local retailer and say, are you going to get the custom carbon silencers in stock? And if not, you know, why not? Basically. Custom carbon silencers. <clears throat> That's right. We'll, That's put, we'll, we'll put the link in the description. Sure. Um, but so as far as I know, I think this is Maybe about the first Maybe you could import extendable these. sounds. Or do you end up in Alcatraz? Uh, very possibly. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but I, we should. me and Steve should talk. Steve, give me a call. Well, uh, so the, the plus <coughs> 4 one 6 er I don't know. No idea how to get <laughs> just, to my, call just my own home. Rossi on the phone. We'll come <laughs> yeah, just say, Siri, call Rossi. 
It'll get, get all of them again. <laughs> okay, well that's that's the that's custom. This chocolate. is great. This is fantastic. I mean, this is, see, this was this is and these look so cool on guns. Sexy. Here's my question for you, uh, because again, I I don't know. Um, how will this affect if I just if I put this on a, on, a, on a rifle at you know with one of these versus four of these? How will it affect? Uh, the pellet will it will it give me more speed? Will it give me no, it makes no difference at all? No difference at no all. Difference at all. <clears throat> with this, well, it will if it catches the end. The problem is that the more you add, the more chance it's got of going out of line. Because it's because and because the pellet doesn't come out straight because they they tilt and that's sure. why this, they stabilize. So if it catches a small hole at the end, the mm. longer you make it, the more chance. So yes, if you if it catches, then it's going to go all over the place. Yeah, but it doesn't affect the velocity. Really? Yeah. Or it's a real bummer. Actually, yeah. they, they, they have actually done. Um, I read a report recently. Somebody had actually done some extensive testing, yeah. and I think that when they had a, a gun at 600 foot per second, they did actually notice about two to three foot per second yeah. increase. Increase. So uh, a, a very because you would think right longer barrel. Well, I mean, if but you think about it, if the air's if the air's actually theoretically, if the air is coming out the end of the barrel, mm -hmm. it could still push that pellet. But it depends Can on you swap so many two feet per second. Well. You know? Really? That's, that, <laughs> that's what they say. Who so, cares? Yeah. Well, the main thing is, I suppose, if you've got a gun that's doing 11 foot pounds, which is safely under the limit, then yeah. it doesn't make any difference. If you've got a gun doing 11.9999 foot pounds, you deserve all you get. You theoretically, <laughs> you could go to 12.001. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I yeah. guess, yeah, if you wanted to do, just check check the power of your rifle. Yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, we always recommend, you know, with the UK laws, we always recommend that people buy themselves a chronograph or gain access to a chronograph and just check your rifle every now again because it is the owner's responsibility to make sure their rifle the, is, is, is under the power. The chronograph. Yeah. The chronograph. That, not the manufacturer, not the reseller. Oh, the, 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 not me. The, the not chronograph. <laughs> the chronograph drives me crazy. Anyway, it never works when you want it to. That's that that's that's Steve Silence is also as well. Good. Way he, to go, Steve! He asked me to Proud point out man. one last thing. He asked me to point out that if you don't like the little silver things here, he's anodizing them, or you can get them seracoated in black, and he also does shiny matte finish, blah blah blah. You know what I mean? The guys yeah, because the guy's a small manufacturer, he yeah. can work to your needs. Sounds like Steve's great. smarter than all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Smarter than all of us. Way to go, Steve. <laughs> Uh, what have we got here? Well, this this actually is a this is a sample, um, right? Uh, and I thought I'd just show it off because what I love about this, I love the checkering or, right. or the. That's the, a bit different. It's it's honeycomb. a well, yeah, uh, we'll, like we'll, a we'll get a yeah. we'll get a close up. Yeah, but it's it, it's no honeycomb checkering. Um, <laughs> so this is basically produced by a guy called Lucas Parsley, who's a one man band in Poland. Yeah. Um, everything CNC'd. Um, the cheek piece is adjustable and it's tiltable. Right. And this stock's called a fusion because it is a fusion between two of the stocks he's made before. And what he's done is he's taken the best parts um, of two of the stocks he's made and, and combined it to produce one awesome. I, I mean, I think that alone is, is gorgeous, but he's going to be producing them in laminates. And, and, and I, I'm going to say this again this guy's a one man band. He just he's, fixes himself he, with he, a knife and a chuckle wood. He basically whittles them out at night. By the fire. By the fire. Oh, yeah. it's gonna be a fire. It's gonna be a fire. Um, sure. So that is just a, that, that's that's on nice. the fire to keep himself. Warm. Ambidextrous. What do you think? What? Yeah. yeah. And what do you think about the 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 the, uh, the fit of the pistol grip? It's like a glove. I mean, yeah, it fits it's my hand great. Uh, so far, we haven't found anybody that people that, that doesn't like. Go on. You I'll have a go. You, <laughs> are you have a go? <laughs> the cheap what piece. The cheap piece there? isn't tight because no. I've just been messing around ah, with this one. Okay, it needs to be tight. What gun does this go with? What's well, it for? Um, originally, for originally Lucas started off with um, uh, a Virac 97 um, and 77. That's the only thing he had, so okay. he made stocks. But because we like uh, we like the quality, uh, I sent over Lucas a couple of actions recently. So he's going to be doing them for the Air Arms series, mm -hmm. the TX 200, yeah. the S 400, the S 500. You know all the usual sort of um, yeah. Air Arms rifles. And as he expands and and, and gets better at, at producing more quantity, which he's working on at the moment, he's going to be looking at other brands as well. So you know, again, he's he, he's I can't call him a small business. Well, he is. I guess he is a small business, a relatively small. business business but we want to support these guys and uh, Lucas is just he's an awesome guy I mean I can contact him and say how about this how about that and do you know what he works on it and, and, and he comes back to me in a couple of days and says what do you think about this you got to be very and specific I mean, if you're if you're a if you're a 
whittler, uh, if you whittle wood for stocks, <laughs> if you're a, a whittler, whittler. whittler. You, you got to be careful, not careful, but like you, you almost have to be very specific on what guns you want to go after. Because like like an air arm, TX200. You need to be William. Great. They don't have, I mean, those don't, they're, they're just kind of a wood stock, kind of, kind of basic look, you know, composite or whatever. But then if you're like, I'm going to make a stock for the uh, uh, Day State Red Wolf, people are going to be like, why? The stocks they have are amazing. Like, like no one's making day state stocks because day state stocks are ridiculous. Yeah. So you kind of have to find that. Where's that sweet spot on what? Who would go? Because this would be great on like an S five hundred. Like this is gorgeous. Yeah, I got like that because it needs a, a, a really it's, cool it's looking more nice of, stock. Much more bench resty than than the ones available. He's he, yeah. The, he made he's a stock called the PRS stock. Yeah, sure. And, and yeah. he's combined that with some other features. But he's also yeah. doing another stock called the Tac two, which is more. This is this is really is a sporting more of a. Yeah. Or a mm -hmm. bench rest stock, but he's yeah. also doing a uh, an FT stroke HFT style stock with an adjustable hamster yeah. oh, sure. underneath it and various other adjustments. Um, I've already got those in stock. Um, uh, I've sold out, so I couldn't bring one on the show because I can't get enough of them, to be honest with you. For the price, great. I've still got the whittling thing in my head. Whittling, oh, whittling, whittler. Whittler. <laughs> but anyway, that, that, <laughs> that's so that's Lucas's stock. Oh, that's adjustable as well, by yeah. the way. Um, these are going to be available. Uh, these are going to be available in the next couple of weeks for air arms, um, Virax, and and possibly more in the future. And he might make a Red Wolf stock. In fact, I might tell him to make a Red Wolf stock. It, it better be just, just fancy schmancy. Like, have like an iPhone and a butt up. Like, <laughs> you FaceTime your friends while you're shooting. Yeah. You brought, what have you got? Am I reaching over here? This, yeah, this grab something. Oh. So what we got, uh, we brought um, a Brocock Commander. Let me put that over there. But it's not about the Commander, because I think this has been seen before. Did we do one of these in the show? We haven't. Yeah. I think you've only mentioned it every yeah. 15 minutes. Oh, this okay, is the new, yeah. it's, the it's, new it's, it's, it's crazy this is scope. Not, this is not about the gun. This is about the scope. So this is uh, a prismatic 12 power scope. But, Prismatic. But zero irony. But this is something a bit different. So I thought I'd bring it on and get some opinion. So we're talking really more like the, um, the the because you did the MTC Viper uh, uh, Connect. Connect, that's right, yes. Which was really popular. Yeah. And it's still, actually, it's still one of our best-selling MTC yeah. scopes. So it's the same but, idea. So, so okay, um, it's, it's got a huge tube. So tell, tell, me, tell me what... Right, so the idea it of this does. is, the idea is that normally with a 12 power scope you have to have something that long. Mm -hmm. You know, it's because you've got basically Galileo telescopes on top of a gun. Sure. Uh, so this is a prismatic, so you have a, a prism in there which means you can drop it down to four inches overall length. That's not new, prismatic scopes have done quite a lot in firearms, they are, you know, Arbolites, they are, sure. they have a lot of that sort of stuff, it's yeah. got a very big military look. But what uh, has been done here is they've reduced the eye relief down to nothing. Mm. And that means it's got uh, a bigger field of view. In this case, it's a 12 power, and it's got three times the field of view of a normal 12 power scope, if it was a, a long scope. So you've got a 12 magnification, which is a lot for hunting, mm -hmm. but you've got three times the view. So basically the same field of view as a four power scope. And a wide angle field of view means you can use a high power scope, not a zoom, it's a fixed power. Mm -hmm. And that's the idea behind that. So have a look at that, Ross, and see what for, you think. Great for uh, and, and, just, and, and just for the viewers, I know you, I know you sort of said like the, the zero eye relief, but the, the, there must be something. You don't want your eyeball touching the, the lens. You can so, see so it's what, nearly touching. There's a so rubber eye cap just little, to take that. So, so I'm not really There's designed. 12 millimeter. Okay. You wouldn't put that on a 308. You would, uh, well, you'd, oh, yeah, you'd, you'd, you'd or use your eye, yeah. Or a Varic 80. Yeah, well, you know, you wouldn't put it on one of those either, but, uh, but you'd cool. put it on a PCP, you'd put it on 22, and you'd put it on a 178 mm. It, it looks, I, I mean, that looks... I mean, you can see, you can see the world. It's yeah. gorgeous, doesn't it? And it, because it's prismatic... And that gum Commander is just sexy. I mean, look at this. It, it's so right. good. Yeah, it suits that it, it does suit it, doesn't yeah. it? Does okay, this so kind of gun freak out the British? Like, they see something that's like, oh, it's, it's great. It's got, I mean, there's just, this seems like it's built for Americans. It is built for Americans. Uh, but it's so well okay in the UK. It, yeah. It's, but mostly it's American. Yeah. And, and no, it doesn't freak people out. No? At all, no. I mean, you know, we, we've got a huge number of, of black stocked guns and bull pups. Stuff that, that does look military, yeah. and, and and we don't seem to have doesn't any, seem to hit any problems. I don't it. know because at the end of the day, you know what? It, it, it does it does it matter what your gun looks like as long as you're not doing anything stupid? You you know, at the end of the day, we're all dudes, and we like things yeah. that look awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, that's what I, I'd like to think. Like well, America, you know, people are like this is for the American audience. I gotta think British guys see this too, and they're like, they do. That's amazing. That looks like a tactical sniper yeah. rifle. I, I think that we're a little because I, I think a lot of my customers maybe might not say it out loud because there does seem to be a thing 
where is is in in the UK where it's form over fun it's, it's form over looks it's function yeah. over looks first yeah. Yeah. but in my opinion I think the guys are a little bit they do like the look of stuff and they do like this but I, I don't there's a little bit of a reticence to admit it and I don't understand why sure. I love I love the look of this sort of stuff I mean I, I don't know whether you, you you know guys have noticed this but we're, like, we're surrounded with military looking stuff you know and tanks and Tommy guns and nothing, God knows what. Nothing, you know, nothing, I, 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 I'm, I'm no unashamedly yeah. it love that sort yeah. of look. But yeah. some yeah. people, some but people. Do you remember when the S16 came out? Thirty years ago, they brought this military-looking gun that looked a lot like this out. Mm -hmm. years ago, and the industry was going, "Oh my God, we're all going to get banned. They're going to think we're Rambo. <laughs> Nobody's going to want that." Now it's accepted. It's completely accepted as the yeah. sort of air gun you would buy. Mm. That's yeah. great. Not what you expect. And it should be because that's because yeah. I, I understand the concept of traditional, and, and there's nothing wrong with having that. And, yep. and liking that, mm -hmm. um, but but there's other stuff out there that's a little, a little bit different, a little bit you know uh, more like military style looking. That's that's fun yeah. and, and, and does the same <coughs> same job. I think the rise of, of synthetic stocks, which is obviously probably a necessity these days, because wood's getting in short supply and it's getting more expensive. Yep. So we are going to see this anyway. Um, and you know, you're starting to get companies that are, are doing a lot of these stocks. You're also getting companies. In fact, that that uh, uh, I'll, I'll mention this maybe in the next video, but about um, about BSA's latest gun, where they've combined wood and, and um, soft touch. I can't say plastic. I'm not allowed to say plastic because oh, no. it's not plastic. Soft. It's uh, tricky though. I've been down that road, and it, 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 if you just through the naked eye, you feel something. You're like plastic. Uh, yeah, but I, it's, I feel but like it's not plastic, it, and yeah. you're like, oh, but it's a composite. And I'm like. Well, it feels like plastic. I'm, I'm not. An, I'm not an expert. It's in, a polymer in of some kind. Isn't it's it? some sort of yeah, polymer. Yeah. 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 So yeah. maybe polymer is the safe word, right? Yeah. That's a polymer feel. It's a more upmarket word. Well, yeah. uh, okay. B BSA basically approached me after the last video because I actually said that the R10 had a plastic stock, and it actually it hasn't. So I was wrong. Yeah. Okay. Happens. Um, so here, here's the apology. Uh, it's actually it's actually not plastic at all. What it is is it's wood sprayed with soft touch. So painted uh, wood. Uh, it, Okay. okay. I, I'm, <laughs> Does that I, help? Look, look. I, I, I'm, I, you, I ain't digging yeah. any. I'm not digging the hole any deeper. So, <laughs> so, I, I, so I want to say to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to say that everybody that watched the last video and I mentioned the R10 having a plastic stock, it doesn't have a plastic stock. I was completely wrong. Haven't it's got a soft. I still don't agree with the look of it because yeah. I sort of think. I, and somebody pointed this out actually in the comments. They said, "Well, how come? How come?" Brokop make this gun and, and it's all plastic and yet you're not criticizing that and, and and my view is is that have plastic or have wood but sometimes the combination of the two together just don't but plastic's seem to... not an evil material is it? no I mean, it's, it's not everything. no no we're all wearing it we're probably living well actually it. probably half it. your body's yeah. got plastic in it now by yeah, the sounds kind of, of it i yeah. feel polluted <laughs> <laughs> but anyway uh, okay so that's that about the uh, the bsa r10 so that's over with i want i want to say about this gun you know, this is something because you know i have a day state red wolf and that you know that gun is amazing it looks great on my wall because it's a hang it's a hanger gun it's it's, it's great you know it's you a, know, a shelf this, queen yes it is a uh, shelf queen love it you know i because you get that gun and i'm like i'm gonna go hunting what should i take and not this one not the one nice. on the wall. i'm gonna get right and th so this is something that like i would take this out of the woods and bang this thing because i mean when i go in the woods oh, I, i'm rolling around the dirt it comes back i mean you know yeah. bang it on the trees i mean I, i'm not I'm, I'm rough on guns i am Maybe that's the American thing, but you know, it's, I'm not. I'm not always shooting bench rest or field target. Like, yeah. I'm out in the woods using my guns. This is a gun I'm going to take, and I know for a fact it's good. It's going to live up to the the, the punishment I'm going to give it. Yep. Uh, and then when I'm ready to pull pull and shoot, it's going to deliver. Customers say exactly the same to me. They come in and buy a Red Wolf. And, and, and then they'll come back and they'll go, do you know what, I bought that Red Wolf last week and I take it down to the club and I molly cuddle it because it's so beautiful. It's so I need, beautiful. And it's great because they turn around and say, well, I need to buy another gun that I don't care about. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's like, oh, okay, well, that's a shame. Here's, you know. It, but, it must be like, I mean, Ferrari, can you imagine owning a car like that where you'd like, you'd park it and you go, what am I supposed to do with it now? Yeah. yeah. Because it's got, so, you know, oh, look, I've scratched it. Yeah. Send it back. I would lose <laughs> my mind if somebody dinged my Ferrari door yeah. at, at, you know, yeah. at the Vons or yeah. whatever you guys buy. I, I, you see, the, th the funny thing is, is that like if I own this gun, I'd still look after it because I can't stand to, yeah. to damage any any rifle, M less so a Red Wolf. And and, and, and I guess it, the you know for the price of this rifle, which you know it's, they're, it's, they're, it's, up it, they're, 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 yeah. they're up there. They're up there. I, I do, and and you know what, most of my customers are exactly the same because you get guns like this at a thousand pounds and they bring them back. Six months later, they might parts exchange them or whatever, uh, and they're absolutely immaculate. And you're just sort of like, wow, you it looks like you've never used it. Well, and the beauty yeah. of this thing. 
thing. You bang it up too much, you replace it all. Yep. Yeah. You know, you go get a new AR stock, you go get a new AK, you know, a, a handle, you go get a new trigger guard. I mean, you, you can, yeah, for the most, you, you order a new bottle. Next yeah. thing you know, I'm sure you can get a new barrel if you want. Absolutely. Like the next year, yeah. you're like, ah, it's brand new. Yeah. You know, for a fraction of the cost. So, yeah. uh, you know, these are, this is just a gun that, I like this, this look, this kind of polymer, hard, whatever you call it. I mean, it feels like concrete to me. Yeah. Something I can, I can, I just want to be something that I don't, that I know can, can hold up uh, if I'm going to be out in the woods. I, I really like the look of that skull, yeah. and and, and, and you know what? We need to we need. To, I'd love to take that down on well, the range we'll, and we'll see how it performs as well. Which is going to be quite soon, isn't it? We'll take one of these out. Well, we're not Six supposed yards. to. Be, well, yeah, we're, yeah. I, I was going to sort of talk about the, the the range. Everybody's been asking me like, where the hell is the range? Um, yeah. Because we're having a we're, we're building a range. It's coming. Uh, it's coming. I just bought the. First I'm, I'm of just it. I'm just I'm just slow <laughs> and lazy. You just so, bought a tree. Uh, just I just bought a tree. Yeah, for the range. I did. I bought a tree for the range. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> well, right, well, I, I think that's everything. I think, yeah, I'm down for a cuppa. Yeah, let's go and have fancy that. a brew. Great. I do fancy you a brew. You know what a brew is, right. <laughs> We're going to go for a brew, chaps. Um, and uh, I guess we'll be back. I love it. Sometimes. Oh, Lloyd, yeah. absolute pleasure, man. Yeah, it's been thanks fantastic. a lot, Rossi. Tony, of course, thanks for having me. This has been great. Uh, for all you guys out there, check out American Air Gunner. Uh, you may like it, you may not. If you don't, oh well. If you do, great. Okay. Hope to see you. Love the hat. Thank you, sir. Thank you.